Ireland's most historic sites. Ireland is an amazing country for paranormal activity and I think that's predicated on the fact that there are like really old buildings that, you know, dating back thousands of years, sites that are dating back thousands of years. All sorts of uh, battles were fought across the country thousands of years ago. So that has to have some relevance to the way uh, people are experiencing these paranormal activities. Sometimes I'm asked, what is the fascination with uh, having a profession as a ghost hunter? Well, there are many answers I could give anybody to that. One is the excitement, the adrenaline rush, as I go in with the team into a building and you know we don't know what we're going to find. I could discover something completely new that hasn't been discovered before scientifically and you know there's that anticipation then there's the fear the excitement the dopamine in the brain you know the whole thing is just really exciting people seem to think that paranormal investigating is very easy and it's uh, you just meet up and everybody goes out but there are a lot of particular roles within a team uh, you need a case manager our case manager is Tina Barco. Uh, she is constantly ringing places and answering people's calls and answering private messages from people that are having experiences, etc. We have a tech manager on the team as well. His name is Shay Kari, and he will take care of all the equipment, make sure it's serviced, make sure it's ready to go at a moment's notice. Everybody on the team, whether they be a case manager or a historian or a tech manager, they're also investigators. That's very important. And they're trained up to be able to go into a house and try and figure out what's going on and run baselines and do everything that any investigator would do. I am constantly receiving calls and emails from people who want to join Irish Ghost Hunters. I know this guy, Tom, a few years, and he has been pestering me non-stop to join the team. We were a little bit unsure about him. We feel there is something about him that you know may work on the team and we're thinking of bringing him to maybe one investigation to see how he pans out as a possible trainee ghost hunter. Ah, Tom, how are you? How are you? Welcome, good to see you, man. Yeah, Welcome so to excited. Irish Ghost Hunters, come on yes. in. I've always had an interest in ghosts. Who doesn't? I mean, since the early days, and every opportunity I got, I'm stuck into it. I pestered the life out of Tim. First opportunity came, I jumped on it. So, Tom, we have an investigation for you. Okay. I know you've been asking for a long time. Yeah. How does Loftus Hall sound to you? This is the one in Wexford? Yeah. Oh, wow. Ireland's most haunted house. Tim recently received a call from the owner of Loftus Hall in Ireland's southeast. Loftus Hall was originally built in the year 1350. The current house was extensively renovated between 1870 and 1879. It is one of Ireland's most historic houses, but efforts by the current owners to restore the house to its former glory have been hampered by strange occurrences, which locals believe are linked to the story of the Tottenham family, who were resident in the house in 1766. Recently we got a call from Aidan Quigley, who is the owner of Loftus Hall, which is the be-all and end-all of haunted houses in this country, and possibly Europe. There have been teams trying to get in there for years and end. We got a call recently to say that he's having ongoing problems from a paranormal point of view within the house. There's things happening in the chapel, in the tapestry room, the world-famous tapestry room. Uh, in the games room, but especially upstairs, there's a lot of strange activity beginning to happen recently upstairs uh, in the old part of the house. Noises and uh, footsteps and things being moved when nobody is there. Uh, he will not allow the public to go up to that part of the house because of so many strange events and the effect that it may have on an individual. Loftus Hall is an ongoing project. It needs a lot of work, it needs a lot of funding, and the owner feels that the project has been slightly slowed down or stopped to a certain extent due to what is happening upstairs. So he has called us in to try and get to the bottom of it, try and figure out you know, what it is that's causing all these strange events upstairs so he can continue to develop the house and bring it back to 
an older state of restoration. Possibly tomorrow. How would tomorrow even? Tomorrow? Tim calls the remaining team members and arranges to leave for Loftus Hall. As the ghost hunters make the two hour trek from Dublin to Hookhead and Wexford, conversation turns to what they might expect to find at Loftus Hall. You reckon there's a chance of actually seeing a ghost? Well, you know, a lot of the time nothing happens, Tom, but there are, are some strange buildings where you actually get stuff happening, and, and Loftus Hall, by all accounts, is a very active building. Huh. So it'll be. Hey, look at it there, look. Oh, my. Sweet. It's huge, isn't it? That's colossal. The gate must be up here. You sure that's not a hotel? It looks like a, it actually was a hotel at one point in the 80s. It was run as a hotel, apparently, at one point. Why who, Jack Nicholson? <laughs> Certainly does have that look about it. It's huge. That's what she said, what? <laughs> Tim, that is Jake. Are we gonna have to investigate that whole thing? Well, you know, we'll try and get as much of it done as possible. Buildings always seem a lot bigger than they actually are. You know, when you've got a whole night investigating, there's so many different rooms you can go to and stuff. And particular rooms, like bedrooms and stuff? Well, bathrooms? Bathrooms, bedrooms, dungeons. It is the typical haunted house. It's exactly what I thought a haunted house should look like. The haunted mansion. Haunted mansion. Loftus Hall. Just ghost billionaires wandering around the place. Well, it's my first time in this building as well, so I, I haven't been here before either. Awesome. So, it should be really good. And a real those trees look scary. The only thing is... They Are they real? They just put them there just to <laughs> they look They probably scary. just put them there, yeah. Oh, man. It's so isolated as well, right out in There's the middle nothing. of nowhere. This is absolutely terrifying already. Certainly. I can't wait to get into this. The team have arrived at Loftus Hall and begin preparations for the overnight investigation. team have arrived at Ireland's most haunted house, Loftus Hall. And as Shay, Tina and Tom gather the equipment, Tim goes in search of the owner of the house. Hello Aidan, how are you? Great to see you. Very good Tim, welcome to Loftus Hall. Thanks very much for bringing us here. Would you mind if I showed you around? I'd love to. Loftus Hall was originally built in 1350. It has been a family home, a convent and a hotel. But in its long and varied history, a common theme emerges, a malign presence in the house. Current owner Aidan Quidley, although aware of the hall's tortured past, was unprepared for what he found when he took ownership of Loftus Hall. I was aware of its past because I grew up here locally and from a very young age, I was aware of the hall. When it was a convent, when the nuns were here, it was a very private place and nobody knew much about it. But then when it was opened as a hotel, people got in around the house, but there was still a lot of unexplainable fear. Even my parents and my grandparents' generation, it was never really a place to go. It was a place to be wary of. That still exists today and for good reason. We can't explain things that have been said to us here, things that members of the staff have experienced in this house. Things that I myself, up to a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have believed were possible. But on seeing and feeling these things firsthand, you know that Loftus Hall is still very much alive. It is believed all the strange occurrences at Loftus Hall stem from one single event, a visit from a dark stranger, the devil himself. It's a very twisted and tortured history that this house has, uh, stepping right back to when 
the famous night that the Dark Stranger arrived here. A lot of people wonder who this Dark Stranger actually was and why is he referenced so much in the history. But he actually was believed to have been uh, a dark being. Some even say he was the devil himself. And he arrived here during a very bad storm, sat with the family to play a game of cards. And during that game of cards, the young lady of the house, Lady Anne, she actually dropped her card on the floor. And as she bent down to pick it up, she looked and to her horror, she saw that this man hadn't got the real feet of a normal person. He actually had the cloven hoofs of a goat. She shrieked. She would never have encountered anything like this before. And when he was discovered, he burst into a ball of flames and exited out through the ceiling of that very room. And to this day, that ceiling cannot be repaired. The Tottenham family were resident in the house at the time of the dark stranger's visit. It was their daughter Anne who suffered most in the aftermath. Anne's tragic story, we should say, it came to a very, very bad end for her. After this episode had happened with the dark stranger and the card game, and it is well believed that it had been more elongated affair that there was a, an actual affair took place between Anne and the stranger. And springing from that came a young child. Now, the family would not have been able to handle the disgrace of their young daughter becoming pregnant out of wedlock. It is believed that Anne was locked away in the tapestry room, that she suffered there unspeakably because of the torture of being left on her own, the mental torture and the physical torture of actually being in childbirth with no one to help her. And disturbingly, it was accounted in the late 1870s when the house was being restored, that a young labourer, while removing part of the wall of the tapestry room around the fireplace, hidden in the wall were the skeletal remains of an infant child. Now, we haven't got any written uh, documentation that Anne Tottenham ever had a child, but a simple act of putting the two stories together and we can get maybe just a glimpse of how horrific her life was. Anne literally never left that room. She died in that room. Her body was removed in an odd shaped coffin. It was actually built up around her body because she died in the seated position with her hands clasped around her knees. It is believed that she was frozen either in fear or in the torture of her situation. It is believed that the ghost of Lady Anne Tottenham haunts the halls and that the touch of the devil still lingers. As the ghost hunters enter the house, they set up a base of operation in one of the house's entrance halls and can already feel that all is not well in Loftus Hall. The feel of Loftus Hall is very oppressive. There is, you know, we have been in many buildings around the country, and I have to say, being here, it's, it's very strange. There's a very, very strong vibe about it. Now, you do get used to the different senses of an old building and smells and creaks and things like that, but there is a feeling in the building as well. Tech manager Shea begins to set up the ghost hunter's equipment, including a thermal imager, a K2 meter for measuring electromagnetic field fluctuations, and a voice recorder to capture voice phenomena. While Shea prepares the gear, owner Aiden tells of his own experience of the house and why he asked the ghost hunters to come to Loftus Hall. We purchased Loftus Hall in August 2011 and it was a beautiful sunny day when we came down here to view uh, this fabulous house uh, in this picturesque part of the countryside. But as the winter closed in, we discovered this house had, had two sides to it. Uh, as the evenings got darker, colder, as the storms got worse, this place became very ominous. Uh, I suppose our dreams of turning it into um, a beautiful, sunny resort, if, as some people thought we were going to do, or that uh, lovely, tranquil getaway, probably changed over those winter months. 
and talking to local people and talking to people who would have known the history better than us, uh, we decided that this house is ready to tell its story in its current form. And that's what we want people to see before it's restored, to see Loftus Hall on her weakest day, telling the truths and her stories. As the sun sets at Loftus Hall, the staff leave for the day and the team prepare to begin their investigation in the now empty house. As darkness sets in, the ghost hunters enter Loftus Hall through the house's original doorway, the door used by the dark stranger on the fateful night he visited the hall. As night falls at Loftus Hall, the ghost hunters prepare the equipment they'll need to detect any paranormal phenomena. Tim decides to begin the investigation by entering the house using the same doorway the dark stranger used centuries before. They will then measure the base electromagnetic field of the house any movement or fluctuations in the field are not normal and can indicate paranormal activity. Now guys, apparently the legend is, the story is, that this door frame here was in the front of the building and it was the original door frame that the man walked through who was supposed to be the devil. This would be a good place to start a base reading, I think. What do you reckon? Yeah. I'm in for finding any devil readings anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got here. Yeah, it's, it's slightly, you know, it's up around 0 0.3, 0 0.4, it's slightly above base reading, so a building should be reasonably flat, maybe up to 0.1 or 0.2, but when it starts to go over 0.5, you know, okay. something is a bit odd, you know? All right. It could be wiring as well, so it's hard to, it's hard to know. Well, we're kind of fluctuating up to about 0.5 here, guys, on the, on the EMF. Interesting. Oh, wow. It really is the haunted house, isn't it? Like that we were talking about earlier, Tom. This is everything you want in a haunted house. Would you stay here alone at night time if we were to leave you sometime? Yeah. Would you leave the kettle? You'd need more than the kettle. While the team continues to measure the EMF baseline, Tim detects an EMF spike on the servant's staircase up to the first floor. Watch yourself on that cable there, Tom. Yeah. Wow, just another 0.5 spike there. Yeah. It's actually just dropped around to minus 0.8 directly after it, you know? Really? Yeah. Tim? Yeah, no, they're, it's going up and down again, yeah. It's doing it right here. Oh, all right, that's, you it's know what part that, of the decor, is it? Which, that? Yeah, this. That is apparently to mark the spot where two people died. A nun at one point died here. And then 40 years in the difference, I don't know which first uh, a man died in the same area. Exactly in the same area. It's like, kind of like a morbid Hollywood walk of fame, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a bit creepy, okay. The unusual EMF readings make the team hesitant to proceed upstairs until they have a better grasp of what might be happening in Loftus Hall. But the EMF spike on the first floor landing and the cross etched into the floor has sparked the team's interest. One of the reasons people don't go upstairs, uh, it's, it's a completely different area of the house. Uh, there's actually two different areas because there's two different floors when you go upstairs. Now, the first floor is more, would have been laid out more comfortably for uh, the main residents of the house, the very staircase that leads up to it here. The servants were never allowed to walk on this staircase. There were actually two serving staircases here. Now, one of them doesn't exist anymore but the other one has a very, very checkered past. Uh, there's actually an etching of a cross on the floor as you go up the staircase, and that marks a spot of great tragedy. Uh, there has been two recorded deaths on that very spot. Uh, very hard to explain. One was a, a young convent nun, and the other was a young man. Now, both occasions were about 40 years apart from each other. Um, but no one seems to be able to explain what happened to these people, 
Why did they meet their end there? But even as you walk up through there, you can feel it. It's, it's a part of the house that's something is not right. The cross that's actually etched into the floor, uh, we believe actually that the nuns had that put there. Um, on a couple of different occasions, the nuns would have had people come in uh, to investigate certain things uh, in the house. And on this particular occasion, it was decided to bless this area, uh, put a cross in, and basically try and give it as much protection from whatever was occupying the space as possible. We know very little about the first order that arrived here. They arrived in 1917, and they were the Benedictine order. And it was a closed convent then. And uh, literally, once they came in, they closed the gates. That was it. The public didn't have any interaction with them, nor they with those. But in 1935, uh, another order took it over, the Dominican order. And it became more of an open house then, because it was a school for girls, but also mass was said in this very house, in the chapel, just past the staircase. Mass was said here every Sunday for the locals. Now, a lot of the locals actually decided to go much further up the road to get mass because they wouldn't come into the house for mass. And those who did come here for mass have reported that it had a very different feeling than normal churches. Over the years then, the nuns left one by one until there was just merely a handful left here. A lot of them took the option to go abroad to missions or to go anywhere else but Loftus Hall because there was a lot of tragedy here. There was the drowning of the nuns in the bay. There was a few more unexplained deaths. And I think at the end of it all, it just became a little too much. While Tim and Tom are measuring the EMF spike on the servant's staircase leading to the first floor, Tina enters the old chapel and almost immediately finds an unexplained temperature hotspot on one of the pews. She calls Tim to confirm the find. As he arrives, the K2 meter, which measures spikes in electromagnetic energy, begins to go off. But just if you stand over there, see, so it's just here. On the thermal imager, it was yeah. uh, heated up. Yeah. Now, there, do you hear the K2 going off? Yeah. We need to document the fact that we're not alone in this room. Can you make us aware of your presence by doing something? Show us something in here. Move something, touch somebody. In some ways, I don't know whether it's because it was a church but I'm finding this place very creepy. That's why I came in initially. This is one of the statues where the heads are missing, and it seems to have happened all over the building. And all the pictures are Stations defaced. of the cross, and they're all defaced. It's weird. It's terrible. When Tina and Tim begin discussing the defaced religious icons, they hear strange noises and the K2 meter detects a strong EMF presence. This was originally a chapel and some of the locals used to come here to mass. It was run by the nuns and this was the local chapel in the area and as you can see there's a lot of different things around uh, religious artifacts etc around the place. I just don't know why that thing keeps going off. See? Again? Are you in this chapel with us? Are you in this room? Are you one of the nuns who used to live in this building? If so, show us a sign by making the K2 meter, the box on the chair, light up. We're just researchers here to document the fact that we're not alone in this building tonight. While Tina and Tim continue to investigate the presence in the chapel, Shay and Tom have discovered something disturbing next door in the infamous tapestry room and call the others. 
when I when I seen this first, yeah. you see you see the back of the chair there, the red part. Yeah. Where it's red on the back, it's uh -huh. on the base uh -huh. of the chair. Yeah. It was red as if someone was sitting on it. Yeah. That you just have to drain it. So you have to drain that spoke. Someone says someone says something about a child or something in here. But well, this this is the room. This is the room. This is Lady Anne's room. Because that image I seen, that was, it looked like the shape of a person. Was about that height. Yeah, but this is where they buried her baby in the wall. The first initial shot I got of the chair, it actually looked, it was more, it was a lot hotter than that, and it, it was if. Looked as someone was sitting on it. Well, somebody was sitting so on it. Yeah, it's all red where the face would see, be. Yeah, you could actually yeah. see the red on the base and on the back of the chair. Or the point of contact of somebody yeah. sitting on yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. Odd. Now you can actually, that's actually getting redder again. Yeah, it's getting redder again. Yeah, it is actually, yeah. Oh, look at that. Look, 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 look. It's definitely heating up. Does anybody in this room with us, can you maybe move closer to the chair, sit in the chair? I think we actually did get it on camera, but for someone, for the chair to be that warm, someone would have to be sitting on the chair for at least five minutes. Like it was, it was serious heat coming off the chair, and there was no one in here, and no one was sitting on the chair, no one sat on the chair today at all. And when I pulled the thermal image away, I think it was saying it's Tim, and when I went back, it was gone completely. There was nothing on the chair at all. And I got this figure, about, I'd say, three, four foot, it's well. Before I'd say, standing just at the edge of the wardrobe on the thermal again, it was, it was sort of transparent, there was no heat in it, you could just disfigure in sort of a greeny pale, which is the, the colour of the thermal imager. And I turned back again, and when I went back to the chair again, the heat signature just moved to the back of the chair again, so the chair actually heated up again. And you can't explain that, like, there's no really way to explain how. That chair can just heat up like that, and cool down. Anne literally never left that room. She died in that room. Her body was removed in an odd shaped coffin. It was actually built up around her body because she died in the seated position with her hands clasped around her knees. It is believed that she was frozen either in fear or in the torture of her situation but she was buried in the local graveyard, in a crypt in the local graveyard, only a few miles from here. And actually, not too long ago, the crypt was open and Anne Tottenham's coffin was there to be seen. The unexplained heat signatures are a significant and unsettling find. The team gather themselves and prepare to move the investigation upstairs. The ghost hunters have found evidence of paranormal activity throughout Loftus Hall, most significantly in the tapestry room. The team now move into the games room, where the Dark Stranger and the Tottenham family are said to have played a game of cards, and the stranger was revealed to be the devil himself. This is the one tub. This is the card playing room, right? Yeah. This yeah. is where the Is this is this is this what I think it is? Yep. That is it. That's the hole in the roof the that they man. cannot repair. You know the story? He's like his Superman act and just straight on up. More or less. Awesome. The team gather around the table for an EVP, a recording of electronic voice phenomenon. EVP, Loftus Hall in the card room with myself, Tim, Tom and Tina present. Can you make a noise anywhere in the room? Can you tap on the table? Can you tell us who you are? What are you feeling now, Tom? It feels cold in here. Freezing. Like properly, properly cold in here. It's freezing. Icy cold. With the audio recording saved for analysis later, 
Tim decides it's time to tackle the upper floors of Loftus Hall. He believes the noise and disruption of the production crew may be hampering the investigation, so he elects to send a single investigator upstairs. What we know so far is we arrived here, we got a base a EMF downstairs. It seemed to be just all right, maybe a little bit high. Yeah. As we moved upstairs in the building, it got stronger. Yeah. And we were getting the fluctuations going up and down. Yeah, right around the half hour. And there's a feeling upstairs yeah. as well. Now maybe it's because it's darker up there or whatever. But mm. I think that should be our next area we go to. And possibly we should send you up alone as an experiment. Sometimes as you tone things down, like yeah. for instance, you don't have too many people. Yeah. We send you up alone, we'll be listening to you and watching you and see what happens if you're, if you're up for it. Yeah, 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 I'll give it, yeah. Okay, we'll do All it. Right. The team returned to the control room to prepare Tom for his investigation of the upper floors. There can't be any other piece of land more soaked in blood than Oak Head itself because this was the source, this was the point where all invasions took place in Ireland. This was a very uh, strategic point in Europe back in the years. So there was a lot of bloodshed here. The people here suffered all through the ages, but there also, it seemed to be an area for pagan rituals. There seemed to be a lot of delving into the black arts, into the occult and all of that. A lot of that energy has been here throughout the ages. I've been areas of this house where I have never felt as alone or as a vulnerable in my lifetime. Yeah, guys, you, you copy? Yeah, I'm just heading up onto the second floor here. Okay, no problem. Cool, cool, cool. Just, uh, just check it. I'm just coming up, I just passed that, uh, that horrific incident room there, and the half landing. And I'm just coming hey, up. How are you feeling back there? I'm, uh, I'm okay, I'm alright. I'm, I'm, I won't say excited, but it's, it's, it's feeling like uh, we're getting stuff done here. Oh, oh God, what was that? This is about as dark as I've ever been in. Okay, all right. Did I just come in? Did I come in that door? Okay. Okay, I don't know if that's the door I came... What's... Hold on. I don't know. Okay. All right, so... Okay. All right, off we go. Off we go, all right. Oh great, the wallpaper's coming off of my hands. This is absolutely ridiculous. Oh my god, this is the darkest I've ever seen. I've ever been in. This is one of the last half landings. The camera's even fogging up. Oh my god. Yeah, this... This is definitely... This is definitely entering creepy land. Oh no. All right, this is. Okay, the camera just bl blanked there for a second. I need this camera, I have no other light. Okay. Door number one. Door number two. Oh my good God. All right. Good. Sweet Jesus. All right. Whew. Oh my God. All right. Okay. This is, this is straight out of the shining.
بازار بازار Guys, uh, are, did any of you come up the stairs, guys? Go ahead, Tom. Is everything okay? Yeah, I just heard some footsteps coming up behind me on the stairs. Did, did uh, one of you come up? Do you do you want me to come up? No, I mean, yeah, no. Did did one of you come up the stairs just now? Nobody came up. There's nobody came up. We're down here. You're sure. This, this, this is the bit where I'm actually feeling a really, really something isn't feeling right up here. Okay, this is way off. This is not. I've never felt, never felt anything like this. Are you okay at the moment? You look a little bit shifty. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's just feeling a little bit, a little bit on the odd side up here. Yeah, it's, well, it, it the vibe just isn't good up here, Tim. I'm right at the top of the top of the house. Okay, have you heard something apart from those footsteps? No, it's just a vibe up here. Okay. Chair. Do you want to sit down for a few minutes or just maybe observe what's going on? No, no, I'm not I'm not gonna sit down. No. Okay. Oh. Man, this is weird. I have never, ever felt anything like this. Maybe I shouldn't have agreed to come up here. No, I definitely shouldn't have come up here. This doesn't feel right. Something feels really wrong right now. I'm gonna start making my way back down. Okay, good. I'm heading down now. Heading down as I speak. What are you doing, man? You said you... Are you alright? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good. You're okay? Yeah, Just no, watch no. Your, I'm... Watch your step. I, I think it's okay. Okay. Watch your step, yeah. dude. A couple of days after the investigation, after we recovered, because everybody was extremely exhausted after that building, uh, we spent hours and hours going over the evidence uh, on computers and uh, listening to the voice recorders. You know, apart from the evidence that we gathered in Loftus Hall, it's a really strange place. It, it has a real strange vibe about it. It's oppressive in a lot of ways. When I walked in there, I, I felt like the whole place was closing in on me. A lot of the members of the team have had many nightmares since, which they don't get after investigations. So you know, I think there's many levels of Loftus Hall. People seem to focus on physical evidence, the bigger, the better, an apparition, something moving across the room, a chair falling over. It's not always as clean cut as that. It's more subtle at times. You know, EMF spikes, or maybe even an EVP, which is quite significant. But we add all these things together. But I found in recent years, the most bizarre effect is the one it has on people's minds. If something is oppressive or there is something there that we believe, the way it affects people, the way they react, 
You see a change physically in them. You see a change in their behavior. And that is one of the reasons we brought Tom upstairs, because you know, we have a lot of hardened investigators, but Tom was a little more you know, open, a little more vulnerable, if you like, to these things. And certainly, it seemed to have a really strange effect on him. I don't know. I don't know what any of these things mean. EMF, spikes, and all the rest of it. I don't care. I don't care. I know one thing. Something followed me up that stairs. Something like I've never felt in my life. It was dark, oppressive, angry. 